up YouTube Liu Shang here host of the extreme fully fishing channel folks at home folks at home today we are going to explore and fish a family friendly fishing spot now I understand that when it comes to the YouTube channel and my following here on the channel there are a lot of anglers out there who like to spend some outdoors time with their family if you watch my youtube videos then you know that myself i like to fish with my parents when they are in the united states of america right we have done so many different trips over the years and caught so many different species of fish and it is a beautiful thing to just have some family time out here however when you take your family, right, especially if you have kids or the elderly, they have very special needs, you know? And you need to choose fishing spots that are not so far away from civilization just to suit those needs, right? So every time when I come down to Florida, I tend to explore at least one or two spots that I know in the future I will be able to take my parents to go fishing without a problem. So for example, what am I talking about, right? I just did a little stroll here in the park. This place is called Sullivan Park here in Deerfield Beach, Florida and there's a parking lot like two minutes from where i'm shooting this intro right you may have to pay to park there but it is convenient you know there is a little playground over here for the kids of different ages i think it's like two to five five to thirteen so if you bring your kids out here and you want to do some fishing for a few hours if they get bored they can go to the playground right there is a restroom here in the park because you know the elderly man especially my parents <laughs> they can hold their stuff in like i can for like seven hours when they gotta go they gotta go you know a restroom is very important right so this is one of those kind of spots right if you come down to florida and you got family with you this may be a good spot for you to do some multi-species fishing well that being said the most important part of it is that the spot holds fish <laughs> i mean if you come out here fishing especially with your family you better make sure that the spot's got some fish down there which is why the main objective of the day is for us to do a species assessment pretty much just explore the area around here at sullivan park and see indeed if this place is good for multi-species or not let me get my gear set up we're going to be hitting different environments doing some observations here and there and hopefully by the end of this video we will have had a very productive fishing session holy cow i just got my polarized lenses on ladies and gentlemen i and i can tell you already there is an absurd number of the flathead gray mullet the mugil cephalus feeding right in front of us right here look at that and then rocks without a care about the world look at that and also i kid you not i've seen three big ass ship's head the arcosargus probatocephalus feeding right along these rocks man so you know what's the game plan for now i'm not saying it's going to be easy to catch them but i think we're going to start the day probing the rocky area right in front of the wall to see what is going to show up easy now there's a ship's head right over there no not you not you it was for the ship's head boy look at that huh can you believe that a pinfish first species of the day it turns out to be a lagodon homeboides which is actually very good for cut bait but this dude is lucky i'm not gonna use it for now this is one of those species that you really have to handle with care one of the most common bait species down in florida the pink fish the lagodon homeboides just as the name indicates pink fish it has spines everywhere it has spines on its dorsal fin, anal fin, pelvic fin, behind the opercular flap. So when you handle these guys, just make sure that you are very, very careful. Otherwise, you are going to get prickled. 
Well, I knew that catching the ship's head was not going to be easy. You throw your bait down there and you have all these other noises, species, right? Kind of trying to get a go at it. Oh, look at that. There's one right in front of us. Don't even know if you guys can see it. Oh, I, I, man, I haven't given up yet. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. Okay, it's right there, it's right there. Come on, ship's head. Come on, shippy, 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 shippy. Did he get it? Did he get it? No, I don't think so. Ah, no! Ah, I hate pink fish. I officially hate pink fish. <laughs> if I had a crab though, man. If I had a crab, I think I would be able to catch them. Squid is not doing so well so far. Man, let me tell you all, you come here with a bucket of little crab, you'll be catching sheep's head left and right. I just don't have the right bait. You see what I'm saying? But they are down there. They are down there and there are some big ones too. Oh, fellas, quickly, oh, quick, 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 quick. There's a squaw jack. This is unreal. My battery just died, too. Unreal. My battery just died. Where did they go? Where did they go? Oh, man. I am so disappointed by this series of unfortunate events that I'm just gonna sit here and I'm going to take five, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take five. You know, I was just chilling, trying to catch my ship's head down there. I had just landed a little checker puffer, the Sphoiroides testudinius. When I was hooking the beast, you know, I just heard this, you know, and instantly I knew there, there was a big school of fish around, you know, I looked in the water, dude, and all I saw was like scales all over, you know, floating in the water. I knew something was on the mullet, right? So I changed my setup to a lure real quick, and the fish were still around, and my GoPro battery died. You know, this is the moment, man, that is like pleasure plus job, you know? It's like you want to make sure you get it on, on camera, right? So I went to change my battery, and by the time I changed my battery, the fish were gone. It was a school of jacks. And I'm not just saying any jacks. Those were huge jacks, five pounds plus range jacks, right? So lesson learned. I just set up my second rod over here with a lure. If they come back today and I see blow ups, man, I, my, my rod's right over there. And if you're watching this video right now, do not make the same mistake that EPF, this is amateur time, man. This is amateur mistake. You know, have your rod ready so that when they pass by, dude, whatever you got it on, a little jerk bait, crank bait, right? A spinner, whatever, cast right at the school, man. It is the same game, right? In the Northeast, when you have the blow ups from like the Atlantic, Bonito, right? Or stuff like that. I'm just so disappointed, man. <laughs> Anyways, the fishing continues. I think I'm going to take a little break from the ship's head fishing. And just put a high-low rig and punch it out there, man, and who knows, maybe something exciting is going to happen. I got to tell you all, though, these jack are powerful, man. They pass only one time, and all the mullet around here are, like, all gone. <laughs> Anyways, I got my high-low rig ready over here. One cool thing about this particular spot that I noticed right away is that the bottom composition over here is a little bit different than the other spots that I've hit at the Intracoastal Waterway. What I'm trying to say is that right here on the bottom we actually have a composition of coral reefs together with sand so it is not like 100% a sandy bottom, right? And for multi-species that can be very good actually when it comes to diversity so I guess we'll find out soon enough Something's on my line, dude. I don't know what it is, but something, something is here, dude. Now, 
What is it? I don't know. A bit right next to the pile. Oh, the mangrove snapper. Look at that. Oh, nice size too, dude. Nice size mangrove snapper. Not a keeper. Because keepers are like 10 inches down here in Florida. But hey, not bad, huh? I've been casting the high-low rig all around this park. And just now, I've been casting more towards the pilings of the bridges. And the majority of fish that I caught out here were actually the sailor grunt, the high mulon paha. So this great snapper over here. Oh, dude, did you just see that, man? Gray snapper so aggressive, went suicidal on us, right? This Lutianus Griseus over here is a big bonus. 10 inches and you can actually take these home to eat, right? I think six a day per person. I actually took one of them 10 inches on the dot just the other day, man. I did a little catch and cook for the for the inner circle on Snapchat, right? And let me tell you, it was delicious. I'm telling you, man, this, this is a spot right here. It's like the most family-oriented spot ever. You take your, your wife out here, or your husband, your parents, your kids, you know? There are no excuses, man. Oh, honey, I am a little bit tired. Sugar, there, there's a chair right, right over here. Oh, honey, it's a little bit too hot for me. Sugar, there's a bridge right over there. Go get some shade. There's a bunch of trees over here. Go, go get some shade, right? Your dad comes over and tells you, son, nature is calling. Number two, there's a restroom right over there. Your kids come, hey, daddy, I'm bored, right? Playground right over there. Man, this is, this is one of those spots, you know, that are just for family. It is truly, truly great. All right, let's keep the multi-species going. It is not the end of our fishing session yet. You know, I'm still expecting something quite exciting to happen. Hopefully those jacks are going to come back. Right next to the pile and soon. That's how I like it. Let it sink all the way down. Dude, I think I got a hit already. <laughs> I had a hit already. My goodness, that was fast. Woo, if you have kids, man, if you have kids, you bring them over here. Ah, it may not be sizes to them right now, but look at that, huh? Another little gray snapper. Another little mangrove snapper. Mangroves are all hanging around that piling. And like I said, man, you spend some time out here, you may just go back home with dinner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do we got here? This looked very exotic down there. And I don't think I caught the species yet during this Florida trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is... Let me wet my hands real quick. Oh, yeah. This is a yellow fin mohara. I'm pretty sure it's a yellow fin mohara. Hell, yeah. Holy crap. We will take care of that Mohara soon, son! But for now, seek shelter! Seek shelter, brother! Seek shelter! Holy cow, bro! That's Florida for you, bro! That's Florida! Ah, but we got a bridge right over here! Why did I tell you about this park, huh? Why did I tell you about this park? Oh, my goodness gracious! Gosh darn it, my man, if you guys could see me right now, holy moly, Woo. I was just fishing right over there and it started pouring, man, that's, that's Florida for you all, okay, check that out, you can make this up, man, I guess we just found out one of the other advantages of this park, right? There's a bridge right over here. I still got that Mohara inside the live well. So let's release that fella first. The yellow fin Mohara is one of the coolest Moharas down in Florida, in my personal opinion, because it is one of those Moharas that don't have only silver 
in its body, right? If you look very, very carefully, it's called the yellow fin mohara because the fins are indeed yellow and there are shades of purple on this fish as well, right? Overall, man, certainly a very, very beautiful species, all right? This is my first one for this Florida trip. I'm going to release it right over here. Sadly, as you guys can see, it says no fishing on this area, right, under the bridge. So I will have to wait until the rain passes to go back to my fishing session in the park today. I don't know how long it's going to take for this rain to come and go because Florida, you know, I mean, the, the gray clouds just come and you just never know when it's going to stop. We will, we will play by ear. Yeah, fellas, I'm checking the weather over here on my phone. And you guys see, right? Right now it's like, ooh, sunny. So you think everything is fine, right? And then you look over there and it's like, gosh, darn it. You got all the clouds, man. And that's exactly how it works down here in Florida. I'm telling you, man. Just like that day when I was at the canal. You guys remember that day? I was just chilling out there and suddenly, man, next thing you know, I'm soaked. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want today to be a repetition of that. I'm calling it. Although I have to tell you all, I fished over here only for about two, three hours. And I landed like what? Eight different species of fish. And that's taking consideration that one, I missed the big ass jack that passed by. And two, I didn't have a bucket with live crabs, okay? Because you guys know, if I had a bucket with live crabs over here today, whoo, boy, I'm telling you, those ship's head would have suffered the wrath of the Asian folk. That's, that's all I'm gonna say, you know? You know, fellas, I'm gonna keep it real with you all. A lot of you guys have been subscribers here on the channel for a long, long time. Every time I come down here to Florida, it is not just about shooting YouTube videos for you guys. It is not just about chasing the species and adding them to the life list. It is also about finding spots like this, you know, that are very family friendly, right? Because as you guys know, I like to fish with my parents all the time. And two years ago, my father had a stroke. You know, he was never the same again. You guys remember that, right? Even nowadays, man, my old man still has problems you know with his bladder right when it comes to going to the restroom he can't hold it like i do you know like seven hours you know like i mentioned in the intro of this video i wasn't joking when i said that so when i come down here sometimes you know you can't be too selfish you got to think about your loved ones right in the future when my mom and my dad they come back to the united states of america yeah i would like to take them on a few trips including florida and this spot in particular sullivan park you know is one of those spots that i can just bait their hooks let them cast out right my father liked to go after the bigger fish maybe he can cast a lure around put a piece of cut bait we buy a bucket of live shrimp or live crab right and do some fishing it's a wonderful place to just spend some outdoors time with your family you know this is what it is all about sometimes you got to think about the future and not be that selfish right anyways i hope you guys enjoy this little spot review with epf all right i'll see you guys next time time to go back to the hotel you know get something to eat you know what i'm saying tight lines and take it easy